Hey guys, welcome to your live player ratings for Arsenal 2, Luton Nil. Probably, and probably our most boring game of the season, if you can believe it. Because, I mean, everybody was complaining about the City game. That was, that was worse. Like, I'll be so real, that was worse. But, we got the three points. Um, that's all that mattered. We were able to rotate a bit to, we'll talk about probably mostly those performances. Because I think... There were some really good ones and some bad ones, you know, but listen, we're in like basically like just win at all costs kind of vibes now. I think that there was a little bit of like a a malaise today after such a big emotional match against City away from home. And so playing Luton at home with a rotated lineup, it did feel a little flat. It did feel a little discombobulated, but we still got the three points and, you know, Luton are shocking, shockingly bad. So it's like you expect to, but like you can never take three points for granted because like a lot of teams don't get three points like that, you know? So it's, it's neither here nor there, but there's, there's 40 of you guys in here. So make sure you guys smash the likes. I'm sure more of you guys are on the way. Um, and I want you guys to get into the chat and let me know how you guys are thinking and feeling. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and set up a very quick poll on man of the match. Um, I, or, you know, I don't know. Like it's, it's going to be so hard um, to, I feel like to pick out like an outstanding performance. I think there's one in particular um, that stood out to me. Um, and so, yeah, but we'll definitely, um talk about it but my goodness, was that boring I mean we just we just handled business the way that we needed to I mean not every game can be exciting I'm struggling to find a third a fourth person um I, I'm just gonna put this person I don't care uh you guys will vote and you guys will tell me what you what you think okay so skill says first half was fine second half terrible um Tawana says uh basically Odegaard got the winner winning goal anyway so man of the match um, Solomon says a good performance. Mr. Happy says same. Some of our players got rest. Um, C says uh, ESR was good, but probably needed to come off sooner. It looks spent. Um, and maybe that's just like a little bit of trying to like get his fitness going. You know, I just I wonder if that maybe be like that that might be a little bit of it because you know, he was definitely like dead on his feet at about 60 minutes, <laughs> you know, and then after that, um, you know, he was kind of like done, but maybe like you have to push through so that you can gain a little bit of that fitness. But I will say that his performance was probably the most sparkly of the of the day. I think that he underlined a good performance, which if he didn't get the assist, I feel like maybe would go under the radar a little bit more. But you know how goals and assists just kind of like underline a performance and give it almost like a little bit more of like um, a legitimacy. I feel like that's what happened with Emil. Um, and I, I thought that he was probably, he was our best performer kind of like in the first half and then he tapered off in the second, but he still did a lot of good things. So yeah, well done to him. Alistair Ben says second half was just an energy saver mode. Melly says a uh, Reese Nelson could have been any player in the prem. He had no personality, never went one V one Tawana says we should have scored three minimum. You what says Trossard played left back better than Zinchenko. Um, Jacob says in and Nelson were bad. Um, skill says in Kedia time to go to the championship. Uh, Lucas says nine wins and a draw in 10. Um, I mean, that's really what it is, isn't it? Like, I do feel like there was an element of just get the three points and get out. Also like, you know, trying to save some energy because we have so many games coming up that we really can't be trying to play our best ever football right now. Like we just kind of get it done. Do I, Am I a little bit like I think the only thing that I would say that is concerning me on in the back of my mind is the lack of like sharpness in our possession, so much loose possession and poor passes like either it's they're short or they're too uh, they're too hard or they're, um, they're it's too is too late or we're hitting them too early because that seems to have been like the Porto game, the Man City game, and this game where once we get into midfield and beyond, those players just cannot seem to connect more than a pass or so. Um, and also, like, 
we played so much of the second half in our half. It just, it reminded me of like 2021 Arsenal where we were trying so hard to play out from the back that like as soon as, like as soon as we got into midfield around the center circle, we gave it up and then boom, like back, you know? So um, personally, like I think that it's um, personally, I think that like, we were trying to do too much. That was like the first of all, we were trying to do a little bit too much. And um, we as, like we didn't have enough quality in midfield or enough quality in our forward positions or forward players to like hold the ball up. Because like genuinely, I haven't seen us play in our half that much since like, well, I mean, we played a lot in our half against City, but we had all the ball, but we're still sitting in our half. So yeah, that was annoying, right? So, yeah, I'm seeing some, you know, conversations being had about Zinchenko. Um, I think he had like, I'll be honest with you, I think he had a very typical Zinchenko performance where he did some good things, but he's so he I, you could tell he's like thinking so hard about being good defensively that he almost like F's it up anyway. And I just found like him to be a little bit ponderous on the ball and trying so hard not to give up the ball and be bad in in, in defense that he ended up being bad in possession in some moments and being bad in defense. Like he was like almost overthinking it. And so he had a mixed bag of a performance, but he still hasn't played enough minutes for me to be like, you know what I mean? Like he's not sharp, like he's not sharp and neither is Partey. So they had mixed bad bags of performances. I think Partey was better than Zinchenko, but Partey also had moments where it was like, yeah, like you definitely need to like get up to speed, but him playing the majority of the game gave Rice a moment to rest, gave Jorginho a minute to rest, uh, which is good, you know, so it is what it is. Um, Android says, um, I was disappointed to hear the crowd sighing on misplaced passes in mass. That negative energy will be noticed by players and affect their confidence. You know how the Emirates is. If you've ever been there, maybe you have, like Android phone, you may have not been there, but once we get into like a difficult scenario, like we're, we're just waiting for history to repeat itself. And like, I can only imagine that you know, Orbino had put out like a tweet right before the game saying, this is when we crumbled last season. You know, we had a really good game against like so-and-so away from home. And then we just started dropping nonsense points. Right. Um, and so I think that there's just like a little bit of that. And then we had like a really rotated lineup. And to be honest, like the performance from the players was really flat too. And so I think all of that just combined to like a really maybe like a disappointing atmosphere, but if the fans don't decide to like be the 12th man when we really need them, like sometimes they can really do it. And other times they just like really just don't engage. And so we're not going to like, we don't have very many games to be flat and like it not matter to the players and stuff like that. Right. Cause I'm just like, you know, look at our games. I keep forgetting who we have next, but um, we have um, Brighton away so we don't have to worry about it but then the next game is at home in the champions league i would expect them to be like home in the champions league against Bayern with no Bayern fans in the stands you need to be up for it um arsenal at home against villa you need to be up for it um home against chelsea you need to be up for it so um there's chances to redeem themselves but i think it's always like a combination of the players being flat and not playing well and then the fans taking on the nervous energy and then boom like it's just like a nasty cocktail so yeah everything about today's performance was like incredibly flat but we just kind of have to get the points right now like we rotated and we're just not really we're not we don't have the players that come off of the bench and like really make solid plays for like it's so obvious who our starting players are it's ridiculous like there is no like in I just don't think that like players coming off of the bench feel motivated to put in these performances and, or they cannot put them in. So, you know, and I'm like, when I'm talking about, like, I'm not talking about necessarily like Zinchenko or Partey. I'm talking about like Reese, Emil, Fabio, these guys, like they know they ain't starting, you know? So it's like, you know, so it is what it is. Uh, Sam says we weren't great today, but I love that we got the three points. Agreed. Nick also says it was heavily rotated comma people. I, I'm kind of like it was rotated and I, I, I don't, I don't love, you know, our, like when we rotate because it's like we just drop off of a cliff, but today at least we got the points, you know, so it is what it is. Samuel says, uh, Zinni was making very risky passes. I don't think he's good enough to play the rest of the games. Um, the American brother says Brighton next. Um, 
Brett says, I can't believe I'm going to say this. We have a winger problem. Gabrielle Martinelli, Saka Nelson uh, falling away at the wrong time. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, you have a, have a little bit of a point there. I think, I mean, we look like a team that hasn't, I would just say in general, I feel like we look like a team that hasn't really invested that much into our attack. And so we have a bunch of striker options. None of them are clinical. And then our wingers, we don't have enough pace. We don't have enough individual moments. We don't have, we don't have enough of that. And so when, when they fall off, even just by like 10%, it's very noticeable. And so, yeah, like we have like a Trossard that's kind of like in between, like he'll have like an amazing performance and then like a really dull performance. So like you never really know what you're going to get from him sometimes. And then you have Martinelli that's kind of like when he's good, he's really good. But, you know, like he really has been like very off it this season for like the entire time, basically. And then you have Saka, who's really just kind of like went through like a roller coaster. He's either like really like missing or really good, really missing or really good or, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, we need to buy a winger. Like we need to buy a winger, we need to buy a striker, we need another midfielder. It's very obvious what we need um, because there's a lot of onus on Odegaard to be our main creative person and we don't have enough technical quality in our midfield at times like to thread the pass through and nobody trusts Vieira. We don't have any pace up front, you know, so it's really obvious what we need to do. Um, but at the same time, like I would like to see better performances from the players that are out there and I just feel like we play within ourselves sometimes so it is what it is you know but we just kind of had to get the three points like it was it's very much so like a game that was just like in between massive games we just kind of needed to almost like do um admin you know get Saka some rest get so-and-so some rest like you know get people some minutes it was almost like an admin day so it definitely didn't go like it wasn't exciting like some of our games in the last couple of months have been but you know what can you say like what can we do you know Dale says, I have no problems with that performance. Zero. Samuel says, I thought Thomas did good. His link up with Odie was excellent. I think in the first half he was good. And then like we just slowly fell off because players don't have enough fitness. But I think he started off well and tapered off. But he had some good moments and some not so great moments. Martin said, I would not worry about the Chelsea game at all. Chelsea are absolutely terrible. They can't score and can't keep a clean sheet. That doesn't mean anything to me. I'll be so real with you. That means absolutely nothing to me. I know that like they'll their whole life, they'll be gagging to, you know, make sure that they have a, a say in us not winning, you know, the title or whatever, you know. So um, that means absolutely nothing to me. Like, you know, um, we just we just need to get it done. You know, William says we can't afford to let complacency creep in now. It's all or nothing now. I don't know if it was complacency. I think it's just like was a cocktail of shit. You know, we have players that haven't played a lot that aren't as good as our starters in. And then you have players that are sometimes are starters, but haven't played all season. So it's like you add them in and then you add like also players that have played a lot of minutes at a very high intensity for like three months that haven't had a rest, all of that. And like, it's Luton at home where you feel like maybe just by 5%, you can just relax a little bit and you get the performance that we had today. I really don't think it's like that deep. I really don't think it's like, this is who we are and we need to be worried. I think when we um, play at the weekend against Brighton, we'll look more like ourselves. Uh, Sacco will hopefully be back. Martinelli will be back on the left. You know, um, Sammy says Havertz two yellow cards away from suspension. I think um, they gave him the one for diving for sure. Like they, I think they felt like they missed a trick against Brentford. So they had to give him one for diving, but you know, he had a very, um, I would say like ghostly like performance today. Um, you know, I, I kind of wanted him to sit out a little bit too. I don't know. Like, I think he has good fitness, but you know, I kind of wanted him to sit out today. He did get an assist for Odegaard's goal, but beyond that, I felt like he was just kind of like, you know, just there. So, um, yeah, but if he's suspended the, like, in, you know, he will get more yellow cards. We know that then Gabriel Jesus has to step up. Right. Clement says three points job done. That's it. It's evident that we need a couple of strikers that can hold up the ball and be gunmen in front of goal. It's so, it's so obvious. Clement is a hundred percent correct here that I almost like feel nothing about seeing the way that our center forwards play, you know, because they offer different things. Um, 
you know, and when they're playing well, they can be really effective, but none of them are clinical, you know? So it's just, you know, I, we just need to get a couple of attackers in. This is just the one position, like we have not invested in our attack. And it's very like, I forget who tweeted it, but and it's not 100% accurate, but they basically said, you can tell that Arteta's only spent 50 million on our attack. And of course, it's more than that because we bought Trossard and, and Gabriel Jesus and the two of them together is closer to 70 million. And then you can maybe drop Havertz in there, but like genuinely we've spent so much money our, on our defense and we have so much quality back there and you can tell. Um, and then you have like, you know, rice that we've spent a lot of money on and you're seeing a lot of benefit from that. But genuinely we need to buy players in the attack. Like, and that's the only place that we haven't really spent a lot of money. So it's, it's needs to come like, and, but there's nothing we can do about it. Now these players have to win, you know, so it is what it is. James says, stop playing Martinelli on the right wing. Um, what other option do we have? You know, I'd almost rather Martinelli on the right and Trossard on the left and just go with that and see, like, we have to have an option just in case something happens to Saka. And I don't think Reese Nelson is the answer. I know he scored today, but I don't think Reese Nelson is the answer. And I feel like maybe a couple of games with Martinelli, like the thing is, is Martinelli is nothing like Saka. So having Martinelli try to do the same things that Saka does on the right is not going to work. And maybe it's just a little bit of like, Everything we do on the right-hand side is very much so like dependent on Odegaard and Saka being on that side, and nobody adjusts when those players are not there, and so it just breaks down. So Martinelli can play on the right, but you have to adjust. You have to adjust, you know, and I just feel like sometimes we expect Martinelli to do the same things. Like, we can't, you know, we have to change things. And that's also why, like, because of the way that we play and everything is very, like, um, kind of like, rehearsed and like pattern, you know, at times we don't have the ability to like, okay, well, Martinelli's there. Let's switch it up. Cause like genuinely, like, why are we not just passing it into space in behind to Martinelli? We're not, we're trying to do the same things that we do at Saka and it's not going to work. Uh, Dean says happy for the three points game just shows the big gap between the starters and the squad players. John says the drop off on wingers is massive. Calvin says, to be honest, I'm fine with this performance in the middle of a week game uh the team saw the game comfortably um yeah uh so pseudonym says if Odie gets injured we're fucked I mean we are like there's just certain players that we just yeah there's certain players that if they get injured we're done and Odegaard is one of them um so yeah you what says uh oh man city just got three uh city just got three one over villa villa you know, Zunai Emery, it is what it is. Uh, Yo-Yo says, so glad these players got minutes, surprised by some of these complaints. What were people expecting? I feel like what people were expecting is probably something that they cannot do. Um, it just depends on how you feel about these players, right? Because um, I have much higher expectations for Zinchenko and Thomas Partey than I do for Emil and Reese. So I didn't have very high expectations for them to like, look like Saka or look like Martinelli or play like them. I was pleasantly surprised by Emil's performance, but I still feel like he's firmly on the bench. Like, and there's no question about it. He is not knocking on the door and neither is Reese Nelson. Um, and the other two just need more minutes. So it is what it is. I mean, I think some people just like have a very like um, maybe inflated vision of like what some of these players are and, I don't think they're they always perform as well as they can, but I also feel like there is like a, a true gap there and it is what it is. You know, we won the game and it was pretty comfortable and we got guys some some rest and it is what it is. But yeah, Reese Nelson and Emil Smith Rowing taking no starting position. They're not even close. Like, you know, so yeah, it is what it is. Uh Blue says I expected Jesus on the right, to be honest. Maybe he'll play against Brighton. I would imagine that. Uh, Jesus is in line to start maybe against Brighton or, you know, cause this was out of this week, this game was the less difficult of the games that we have. Right. So we went super strong against city. Then we went much weaker against Luton and we did the same thing. I forget what game week it was, but we had like Nottingham forest in the middle 
And so we play like, or Sheffield or something like that. And Emil started that game. And so what I would imagine happens is that when we play against Brighton, we'll go a little bit stronger than we did today. And then against Byron, we'll go to our strongest, strongest. So um, this was the day to really like rotate, you know, um, Sam says uh, Brighton will be tough. Uh, we need to be very strong. We can't rotate. I think we we can. Um, I think we can rotate just a little bit, um, but not as much as we did today. Uh, Lucas says, looking at stats, Brighton play well against Brentford. Um, Clement says, uh, Foden oozing with that hat trick. You know, um, he was like totally missing in the game against us and then turns around and you know, and, and that's the one thing that I'm kind of waiting on from like one of our players is to have like a hat trick day or, you know, a game where they just kind of like carry us into, you know, from like a difficult in a difficult game, you know, um, and I'm still kind of like waiting a little bit, you know, um, we're going to play against like Villa and we're going to play against these teams. And I'm just looking for somebody to like really step up. That's like not a defender. You know, like basically one of our attackers, like when is one of our attackers going to like come up with something special? Um, so, yeah, um, taking Holland out of the Man City 11 always makes them look better, by the way. So I'm not surprised that they're playing better without him. Saida says Nelson was very disappointing. He looked a lot more, a lot better against Liverpool in the cup, in my opinion. Nelson's just not good enough. Like he needs to be, he needs to be moved on. Like, um, He's 24 and he's very much so like not on the level that we require. And, you know, so I'm not really that surprised at his, his performance. I just, I don't know. It's like, well, if Reese Nelson gets some playing time, I'm like, he had a magic moment against Bournemouth, but for the most part, like he's just not, he's not it, you know? So I'm not surprised that he didn't have, that big of an impact. I mean, he still scored a goal, you know, so it is what it is. Pseudonym says, let's talk, let's let them talk shit up on Saka. Just don't take the bait. It's all they can do. They're rattled, reach desperately. The only, I guess the only thing I would say um, about the Saka Foden thing, because we know that Saka will be like basically trending now because Foden scored a hat trick in the run in, is that um, Saka just needs to respond. Like, you know, it's, it's one of those things like for himself, like I know Sack is a really good player. Like I'm not really that fussed about it, but you know, uh, they'll always ask questions when the questions aren't being answered. And I feel like, you know, this is the run in, and this is usually the time where in the last two seasons where we probably were the most disappointed in Saka, um, because he hasn't really like taken it by the scruff of the neck. Right. And so he's injured right now and he's not even in the team, but whenever he comes back and if he's fit and ready to go respond, you know, have a hat trick day, you know, carry the team, you know, do something, you know? So yeah, games in the, in the run in are definitely more heavily weighted than games just before that. And so what we're like a game or two in, and he's missed one and played pretty poorly in another. So, you know, it's up to him to respond. You know, um, Foden is a great player. It is what it is. Yo-Yo says this game just confirms that certain players will be expected to start two out of three games a week and other players will be required to come in consistently as subs. I mean, as we know who we can trust now, I feel like this is a good tester, but I feel like Things will be more set in stone unless we get some major injury crisis or something like that. We can trust Trossard and Jorginho mostly and Tommy Asu um, as like that's probably like our 12th, 13th and 14th player um, that we can trust. We probably have one more in there like Zinchenko if he were to get sharp. But everyone else, um, Fabio, Emil, Reese. Um, Fabio, Emil, and Reese, and Eddie, those four, um, you just don't really, there's not, there's nothing there really. And the worst part about those three um, or those four is that they all play in advanced positions, which puts a lot more pressure on Martinelli, who's had a tough season, on Saka, who's dealing with injury problems, on Odegaard, who's being asked to do a lot anyway. Um, you know, so 
we really just don't have the numbers up front and neglecting our attack always kind of comes back at us when we're in stressful situations. So like we go to the Etihad and, and are super blunt, you know, we, you know what I mean? So it's just one of those things, right? So yeah, I like, we, we kind of know who we can trust Tommy. Um, the main ones that we can trust are Tommy Trossard and Jorginho. Um, and Jorginho is basically a starter now. So that's Jorginho slash parte. Everyone else is a wild card. We don't know, you know? And so I would imagine that they're not going to, uh, play a lot. Um, Johnny says Foden didn't carry anyone what it matters against us. He stank worse than Saka couldn't care less what he does in a win anyway game. Um, Frederick says, um, Jess, how did you see Parte today? Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. We're actually going to get into player ratings now. So there's 350 of you guys in here. Make sure you guys smash the likes and all that kind of stuff. Um, set notifications. Um, we did do a watch along for the Luton game and we will do a watch along for Brighton. So make sure you guys have your notifications and everything on. Um, cause I put out the link cause I'm on TIFO for my watch alongs now. For those of you guys that haven't, um, been on the channel for a minute, let me just clue you guys in. I have the amazing opportunity to work with TIFO and TIFO has created a platform just for content creators that want to do watch alongs. And so I'm working with them, which is amazing. And so the watch along program is so much better than doing watch alongs on YouTube because we can sync everything up. There's a scoreboard. Everything is like just right there in the program and they're constantly giving updates to make it better and better. And so prior to games when we're going to do watch along. So for the rest of the season, almost every single game will have a watch along. You will the games like the days before and the in the streams that I do, I'll give you guys the link and the access code is Jessica. It's always going to be Jessica. But just be aware, like on Twitter, I'll put it out on YouTube. I'll put it out in our streams. We'll put them out. So you guys don't miss out because the watch alongs have been super fun and we missed some of you guys today. So make sure you guys are clued in on that. And, um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on that for sure. Um, the Ma Mr. Mad Hatter, thank you so much for your super chat says Zinchenko was shocking. Lost the ball more times than I can count under zero pressure. Nelson can't get past a man or pass forward. Our bench needs work. And that's where you know, a top striker will come in, a top winger will come in, another midfielder will come in. It'll just round our squad off so much better. Um, we have to move some of these, like, we have to move beyond the Reese's and the Enkedias. We just have to, you know, they're not giving us anything. And they're taking up, like, just imagine if we had another striker and a winger that weren't them too, but they were, like, better than what we have now or just as good as what we have now we're cooking, you know? So, um, we've neglected the, um, we've neglected our front line and it's always going to be something we speak about, um, you know, until we address it. Um, and I understand why we've always kind of built from the back, but it's time, it's time. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into player ratings, smash the likes, um, get into the chat because I want to know what you guys are thinking as well. There's also a poll on Man of the Match, so you guys can vote on that too. And I'm getting a little bit of a headache um, because my bun is too tight. When will I learn? When will I learn? Oh, my goodness. Um, like, it's not good. Okay. Um, Raya, let's start off with Raya. I thought it was kicking was awful today. And it was also not good against Man City. So... Get get it together. Get it together. Um, he wasn't tested. Whatever he needed to do, he did. He didn't put us under any pressure or anything like that. But I'm going to need some of them kicks to actually go to Arsenal players at some point. you know. So um, he got a clean sheet, but not necessarily because he did anything spectacular. And the, the kicking has got to get better. So, um, But I'm sure it will. Like, it's fine. Like, nothing really happened. So I'm going to give him a six. Um, I just, I hated the kicking. And so maybe I'm being a little harsh, but. Um, I didn't love it. Um, Ben, I thought I ha had another good game. I thought tapered off towards the end. Like he had some good moments in the first half and kind of like it's, you know, I, like I say, like, I feel like the loose touches and the bad passes and stuff start to infect the players that were playing good in the beginning. I kind of felt like that happened towards the end, like towards the end of the second half, we were really poor, um, you know, on the ball. And I felt like Ben kind of got mixed into that, but Early on in the game, he was one of our better players. He was sweeping up things really well, heading the ball back to Raya cleanly. You know, he was doing well, you know, and he had 
some good moments like going forward and stuff like that. So no complaints for me really from, from Ben's perspective. Like I think he's playing really well right now. Um, you know, I just hope that he maintains his fitness because I just don't, I don't know what we'll do without him. So I'm going to give him a seven and a half. I thought good game. Um, but overall, like everybody was like a little janky, you know, so I'm not about to be like out here giving nines and tens. Like, let's be serious. Um, Saliba, I thought his passing was kind of poor. Uh, he gave away the ball quite a bit under very little pressure. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes when the picture changes in front of you and you have a completely different player in different positions, like Zinchenko changes everything because he just has to be in midfield, right? So you have Kivior who doesn't come sent. Like we played so well. I thought like genuinely we are best when Ben is inverting and Kivior is on the other side, genuinely, because Ben White can do the inversion without it being like so like overt. But when Zinchenko is out there, inverting I think at this point like it just feels a little bit like OTT and we're not getting enough bang for our buck and then like you know he's out of position whatever losing the ball unnecessarily whatever um so right now our best inverted fullback I do think is Ben um and so I'd like to see that back um, I'm glad Kivior got a little rest because I feel like Kivior should start the next game against Brighton you know so um that being said when things change in front of you I do think it's like the angles are different. You have Zinchenko running around you and shit, and he wants the ball a lot. So, you know, Saliba's normally the one always on the ball. You have to give it to Zinchenko, and he's on the ball. There's a lot of things changing back there, so I don't want to be too harsh on him, but I did feel like he gave away the ball a couple of times where I was like, like, can we clean it up? You know, so um, I'm going to give uh, Saliba a seven. I thought, you know, clean sheet, cleaned up. Like, Luton really didn't offer anything. But, like, at a certain point, I was like, okay, Saliba, like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, Gabrielle, the best back there, the cleanest back there. Um, he just had another, like, really, like, almost, like, flawless game. And I, I'm i not even – I'm, like, I'm not even joking. Like, I do not remember the last time that he was shut. Like, I don't. Like, <laughs> I think he's been, like, just fantastic this whole season. Um, he'll probably get the highest grade out of, like – the back line he's gonna get an eight like he was really really good um and he was just like very clean and calm and composed where i thought like a lot of other people were just like losing their shit and i'm just like why like just relax you know um and then zinchenko um it was so mixed it was so mixed i don't think i don't he's not really radiating confidence and you know when Zinchenko's confident he is like so like sharp and he adds something I feel like when he drops like five ten percent it's like whew you know and and James said it and I feel like James I'm gonna give him credit because he's the one who said it and I never really thought about it this way but Zinchenko Zinchenko's highs may be higher than Kivior's but his lows are definitely way lower than Kivior's and I think when you look at our team is like we're maybe not as exciting as we were last season and we're not as fluid as we were last season and our highs haven't been as high as last season but our lows are definitely nowhere near the lows that we had last season and i think like like he said like rice has a lot to do with that his highs may never be as high as thomas Partey's highs but like his lows are definitely not that close and then you have somebody like Zinchenko who's when he was on it last season, my goodness, he was unplayable. But when he slides that 10%, it's like, get him out, get him out, you know? Um, Cause then the risk doesn't out, outweigh the, the reward. Like, you know, the risk outweighs the reward um, when he starts to drop by, you know, 10%, five, 10%. So um, get key viewer back like in that position immediate fuckingly, like seriously, genuinely um, because today just was like back, you know, but I know that he hasn't played a lot. So I don't want to be like super harsh on him, but I feel like we saw this even when he was fit. So I feel comfortable saying that like, yeah, his highs are very high and his lows are very low. And right now we kind of need like a very solid kind of like what we're going to get from him uh, or from our left back. So I'm going to give him um, um, a six. I thought Kivior get in, you know, like keep your, get in like, ah, ah, fuck. 
you know, it just, yeah. I really like Sinchenko, and he adds something, but when he's not confident, it's spec. You know, it's scary. Um, Rui says, nah, Tommy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like I like Tommy a lot, um, but our best period genuinely was when Kivior was there, and I want to believe that it's because Kivior was in there. I do think Kivior is more... He's not as stiff as Tommy. Like Tommy, when he's in attacking positions, can be a little heavy footed and you know, and I think Kivior has like a little bit more like like about him. Tommy is a much better 1v1 defender, but Tommy is a better 1v1 defender than everybody. But that still doesn't mean that he's the better all around player. So for me, it's Kivior until otherwise, because even Tommy is not fully ready, I don't think, you know. So yeah. Is Kiwi for me. Uh, the guy says Ukrainian Andre Santos sell him. That's not nice. Uh, JJ says smash the likes people 356 here and only 147. Like exactly. Exactly. Because um, yeah, I'm about to look at this right now. Oh yeah. These likes are nowhere near as high. It's not high enough. It's not high enough guys. Why are you guys doing me like this? You guys know you're liking the content and we're just like, we're like about halfway through 146 likes. And 343 of you guys watching, make sure you guys are smashing the likes. It's a free, like, painless way of supporting the channel and helps, you know, the channel grow and more of you guys get here, you know. So, um, yeah, help me out. And I'm looking at the man of the match so far, and Odegaard is, like, landslide, um, really, with 50%. So there you go. Um, Marco says, I'd give Ben a rest and play Tommy and then Kivior at left back this weekend. Yeah, you could do something like that. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to I think there's still an opportunity to lightly rotate in some positions like one or two positions at the weekend um I would say like you know maybe like hopefully Saka is ready to go but like Saka comes back in Martinelli plays on the left Jesus plays through the middle give Kai a rest you know get our our midfield back of of Jorginho and Rice and Odegaard or maybe you know start Thomas Partey if that's what you want to do I don't really care um, and then drop in Tommy on the left or Tommy on the right, let Ben rest and then bring Kivior back in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, somebody said, change the, change the thumbnail. Um, oh yeah, the thumbnail. I forgot to put Luton's, um, thingy on it. My bad. You are right. Hold on. I wish it was two nails. Um, hold on. You are so absolutely correct. Thank you for for catching that. Um, I'll I'll do this right now. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I knew I forgot something. Look at me making mistakes. But you know what I meant, though. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Let's see. Edit. Let's drag a new thumbnail in here. There you go. All fixed. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't Okay. Maybe it's, maybe it's not going to let me. Um, people are saying like Foden is on smoke. I'll be so honest. Like I really don't care. Um, Cause I know what's going to happen is because people it's like, we get very insecure about our players very quickly and Saka didn't play today. And so rivals will be like, you know, on us about Saka. And instead of like ignoring it, there'll be like a lot of slander from Arsenal fans on Saka because Foden has like a hat trick or he's playing really well. Like, ha, like there's been weeks gone by where Saka was playing really well and Foden was nowhere to be found, but that's, you know, other teams get to have good players. Doesn't mean that it always has to do with Zaka. Um, Richard says, Zinchenko is a mistake waiting to happen at the moment. Seems to fall asleep at times. Good teams will punish us. Yeah, it's, he wasn't great today. And I do think that he's kind of fallen down the pecking order. And it's, you know, the game is the game. Like we need to win games, you know? So, um, I think under Mikel Arteta, our, some of our best football came post Dubai, and that team did not include certain players that last season you would have never dreamed of putting together a starting eleven without them. And that's how fast football changes, you know. 
And um, like I said, the game's the game. Partey, I thought he was actually better than Zinchenko in terms of like having more of a consistent game. He had some rough moments, some rusty moments, which you would expect. He genuinely hasn't played like a full 90 since, you know, September, you know, so it's been a long time since he played football and he takes a while to get going. But some of his good traits did come out today. Some of his not so great traits came out today. Um, we don't need to be doing Cruyff turns on the top of our box, like under no pressure with a couple of seconds to go um, in the half. Uh, I feel like when will we learn? Like you don't have to do that. Like be more aware, like because we gave away like a dangerous free kick right after that. And luckily Luton are like one of the worst teams on the planet, but like another team could punish you for that. So his good things shown, his bad things shown, but ultimately like I do feel like as the season goes on, Arteta will use Jorginho at times and use Partey at times. And so it's important to get Partey minutes and a couple more minutes in the tank, you know, which is, which is a good thing. He played against Diddy. He's played today. He started today. And so it'll be interesting to see who he chooses for, Brighton because that's going to inform I feel like who you play against Bayern so maybe you go with Partey against Brighton and you go with Jorginho against Bayern because we Bayern are not about to run past you they're not about to run past you but Jorginho also like has been more of a reliable player for us in big games recently than Partey so and I don't think Jorginho can play away at Brighton and then turn around and play um against Bayern right so we're going to need both of them and they both serve very similar and different purposes. So yeah, I thought that uh, Partey had some good moments. He almost scored, um, you know, and if he's playing with, you know, Saka and maybe some of the other players, like it'll be better. Um, I just feel like you lose a lot when you don't have like Saka out there. So there's nobody to find in between the lines there. Odegaard is having to drop deep. Like there's just a lot of stuff was not as clean as it usually is. So I'm going to give Thomas a seven. I thought he was good, had some mixed moments, but ultimately like he did good for a player that hasn't played a lot of minutes. Right. And you have to keep that into consideration. Um, so yeah, uh, Nico says I'd start Georgie at the weekend and Partey against Brighton. Jamal says Emery did not have a good evening. Um, fuck Emery. And they better, they better roll over against us at the Emirates. I just feel like they'll play like shit against city and then turn around and like play as hard as they fucking can against us. Like be serious. Um, Martin N says seven for Partey. Uh, D A J says as, uh, as they're both available, I don't care who starts. Um, Jules says, Partey did well for the second start. Hope he gets more time against Brighton. We going to need him in the run-in. Every game is a final now. Um, Onan Frederick says, if Partey is back, Georgie holds bench. It's simple. Not if he's not fully fit. And again, like I just feel like people are being incredibly disingenuous about what Jorginho has done for us in this time. Like He hasn't just stepped in and done a job. He's been man of the match and player of the match in big matches for us. So he's like, he's kind of like genuinely an option to start big games. And Partey is genuinely an option to start the lesser big games. You know, every game is massive, but like you need cool heads and, you know, calm minds and things like that in games like this too. So experience, temperament, all those things are going to come into, into consideration. So um, to me, like, I'm, I'm really not about to disregard some of the things that Jorginho has done. He has not just done a job. He's been fantastic in a lot of our games, you know? So, um, yeah, I think Partey is good. It's fine. But, like, let's be serious. Let's not go too far. Like James is, from the first half, Partey was way better than Rice. You've gone way too far. And um, the main reason why Partey looked good was because Luton are also terrible because our midfield looked like I could run through it. So let's not be let's not be crazy. Rice has been one of our players of the season and should not be disrespected. I don't care what you're smoking. I don't care like anything like Partey and Rice are so different, but Partey stops like Rice stops things from happening before they happen and you guys don't like a lot of you guys don't actually care about stopping things from happening and being on the front foot and and being sound of mind all you care about is a cute pass here and there if somebody genuinely does a nice pass in between the lines you will genuinely love that more than somebody stopping us from getting ran through so what rice does is just not really 
recognized or cared about by like a very large section of the fan base and genuinely start parte in a game like a big game by himself as the lone six and see if we survive that game we won't rice stops so much from happening you probably want both of them playing together because they play off of each other but let's not sit here and pretend like rice has been a bum and parte like as soon as he came like all of a sudden the, the skies opened up and the rain stopped let's not kdb ran right past parte the other day and don't say it's because he wasn't fit okay so you went too far he gets a seven. He gets a seven. And we're going to need all of Rice and Partey and Jorginho. Rice is the guaranteed starter. Are we all on the same page? I think we need to be. Okay. Um, because y'all, some of y'all be taking it way too far. He didn't do anything special in this game. He did well. Okay. Um, we all, I watched the same game you guys did. Okay. Um, now. Who else played? Let's go to Emil. I think Emil deserves a moment of our time and appreciation. He won player of the match. And to me was, I mean, Odegaard played good, but nowhere near his level standard. So like it is what it is. Like he scored the, what ended up being the winning goal. But I do think Emil, like out of all of the players that came in for starters, had the most shiniest, sparkliest performance and actually showed that like he wants to be a part of what we're doing. And I'm not saying that Reese didn't try. I'm just saying that whatever he was trying to do, it wasn't coming off the way that what, what Emil was doing was coming off. He won the ball back for our first goal and he got an assist and he was dropping in between the lines. He was receiving the ball off of Raya. He was really calm on the ball. Like he was doing a lot of really good things. And I think if our wingers had been maybe a little bit more secure on the ball he would have gotten more joy um but they just weren't um every time he gave the ball to one of like trossard or whatever they just or even like havertz at times like they just coughed up the ball nonsense like you know but i thought emil did a lot of good things and it's it's just so it's it's hard because i don't think we play well with two tens i just feel like we always look more susceptible and less attacking when we play with two number tens because odegaard has to drop in and it just disrupts everything we're trying to do. But Emil held his own and played very well. He's my man of the match. I think he played the best. At, he was the most shiny. He was dead at 60 minutes, but that's what you would expect. So I'm going to give um, I'm gonna give Emil an eight. I feel like, you know, if he had to come in and make a difference in some of these games, he'd probably be somebody that I'd look at, you know, because today it was very slim pickings. And I still feel like he was really shiny in that first half. Um, and it's tough. You know, he hasn't really played that much, you know. Um, so, yeah. Sam says Emil gets an eight. O'Malley says Emil in tight spaces is really good. Winning Way says Emil is a confidence player. You what says seven and a half for ESR played well. Wish he got a goal for confidence. I mean, he got an assist. That's good, too. I mean, he is a number 10, right? Brandon says fans are fantasizing um, players again. Blackface killer says, hold that, Jess. Not sure what I'm holding. Um, like, oh, about a meal? Uh, again, like, let's not go too far. I'm not holding anything. A meal, I still don't think he's going to make it at Arsenal. He's still not a starter. He's still well below all the starters. Like, he's probably our fifth best midfielder. But he played well today. So I'm not holding anything. Um this is this is why like it's like I know this is why people are not honest is because you tell the truth about a player, whether it's good or bad. And as soon as like you somebody feels like, OK, well, they played well. So now you're wrong about them. I never said Emil is a shit player. I said he's never fit enough and I don't think he's going to make it. And he's not better than Odegaard. And I feel like I'm still right on all those things. So, yeah. Um, not holding shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Marie says Odegaard's final ball in the second half was, just wasn't happening. ESR wasn't afraid to do the dirty work player of the match. Odegaard, this is the second game where I feel like his final ball just hasn't been it. And I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's sticking in my head, a tweet that I, I saw that said that like, Odegaard does so much hard work off the ball that when he does get the ball to do what he needs to do in the final third, he doesn't have enough energy or concentration to do it. And I do feel like I'm I'm sensing a little bit of like that. 
because he's so pivotal to what we do up front and he's genuinely our only creative player when we play. And so I'm a little bit concerned, you know, of like, is he doing so much work off the ball that when he gets it, he's unable to complete his passes. Now I'm not saying that like he doesn't have to do better. He absolutely does. But if he's our main creative hub, I'm not loving watching him scuff very like Odegaard passes, like passes he should be getting. That being said, you're absolutely correct that ESR got back for some clearances. He, you know, made some really good like passes. He was energetic. Like it was more than just like, oh, he's running around and he's trying hard. Like he genuinely had quality like he did. So Emil to me was the best player um, and deserved that man of the match. And let's see like how he does, like, cause he will get some more minutes here and there. Do I think he's pushing for a start? No, but you know, at this stage, what can you expect? You know, um, he hasn't played enough for me to expect anything amazing. Um, Samuel says ESR was exceptional, wanted the ball all the time. Eight. Uh, George, George, George says Emil is okay. He needs to move on at the same point. Brandon says Emil will end up at Palace and Nelson at Brighton. Marco says, why didn't Vieira come on for Odegaard today? Thoughts? I just don't, maybe we don't have the capacity to bring on somebody else. Like, first of all, you, the last couple minutes of the, that game, you're probably not trying to see Emil, Partey, and Vieira. You know, um, it's just too risky. Um, but there needs to be questions asked about all of these players and whether or not we're getting enough from our bench. If Arteta is not playing them and they, you don't feel, we don't feel genuinely confident that they can contribute in difficult moments, then ultimately like it's like what are they giving us you know so um and it switches all the time it's like Vieira will do something and Emil's flat Emil will do something but Vieira doesn't play it's like can we condense the two of them and maybe do something bigger and get a player that really moves the needle like the summer there's a lot of questions you know but right now Emil is at least at the very minimum showed that like he can step in and at least make a dent in the game you know, because in games gone past, I feel like some people come out there and it just passes them by, you know, um, and it, the game did not pass him by. And so I thought Emil did a really good job today. Well done for him. Um, Odegaard, probably one of our best players, but looked a little ragged, not as sharp as I would like. We need you to be as sharp as possible because like some massive games coming up. Um, he did score a goal. I expect him to score goals and get assists, you know, like that's who he is like even when he's not playing that well he can come up with a moment to get us something like even when we played against like Porto he came up came up with the assist right um and the off the ball stuff I expect I just I'm hoping that we switch it on back to the sharp that we were at pre the international break he played a lot of minutes in international break he played his fucking ass off since you know Dubai and he hasn't really had a break you know so um, I'm hoping this isn't any sort of fatigue because like we were just talking about, there's absolutely nobody that we can bring in that we feel confident is going to be able to do it the way that he does. He does so much work in there that I would be so like gutted if like he kind of fell off of like his, 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 uh, his form right now, but he's still playing well, you know, just not his tip top best, you know, but he'll probably find a second wind in there. Um, I'm going to give him, um, I'm going to give him, uh, I'm going to give him like a seven and a half. Like it's Luton and they're shit. I expect us to beat them and score goals. His overall game was good, but not great. You know, so it is what it is. Um, and then we'll move on to the front line, but I want to hear what you guys are saying. Travi says, I think Trossard can play the Odegaard role. Faya says, good three points. We have, we have to keep it up until the end. Come on, you Gunners. Big up, Jess. Big up to you as well. Uh, Diehard Gunner says, Odegaard was man of the match. Rui says, Vieira should have come on to give him a rest for Brighton. That's easy to say. I mean, I feel like you can only have one of Emil or him out there at one time. So maybe Vieira does something against Brighton away from home, you know, um, and comes on from there or whatever. But um I just feel like there's just so much that Odegaard gives you that like missing him and Saka is a lot. It's a lot because we we felt even a bad Saka missing today. Even Saka, the way that he was playing against City would have probably still been better than what Reese was doing today. So I just, yeah, I don't think that we were in a position because Saka was already gone 
you know, so let's see how we, we maneuver things um, for the next couple of games because we need to be as good as we can possibly be against Bayern in a couple of days. So whatever we need to do to get there, maybe that's giving Vieira some minutes against Brighton. Uh, Sir West says, not in this game, though. I am a, a little bit concerned about Jesus' game. I sometimes feel like he is slowing us down. And winning way says Odegaard Wurtz next year, hopefully. Um, yeah, the um, Jesus will will play against Brighton. I have a feeling for that. Um, I think he will. Because um, Kai, I, I do think, needs to sit out for a game. I do. Um, I think he needs a little a little moment um, because he's played a lot of football nonstop too. Uh, you know, so maybe Jesus starts that game. Like I said, Saka hopefully is ready to start that game. Martinelli starts on the left. Um, maybe you, I mean, you can't drop Odegaard. Um, I just, look, you, you just have to hope that you score a lot of goals early and Vera can come in later. Cause child, I just don't, I don't trust it, you know? So we'll see. Um, let's see. Um, We'll go to the front line now. Um, it's weird. I'm like trying to go to Saka, but he didn't play. Um, Reese, you scored a goal, but it was just whatever. Like genuinely, if he did not score, it'd be pretty low. Um, but, you know, he scored a goal. He ran around a, a bit, but it is what it is, guys. He's just not is, – is it even worth like really going into? Um He's just not good enough, you know, for us right now. Six and a half. So um, um, I know people were saying it was an own goal, but, like, let's be serious. Like, he was right there and had the guy not, like, Reese Nelson would have got it if the other guy didn't get it, you know. So he he did – he was there for the goal, okay? Um, and without that, it would be an even worse goal or a worse score. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. You guys are cold. Like, he was right there. And you know what's so funny is we've had Gabrielle be stripped of goals before because it was considered an own goal, and you guys were not. He wasn't score. He didn't score. It was an own goal. You guys are only doing that because it's Reese. He was right there. He he. Come on, like get like we're already gonna give him a low score. We know he's not good enough. We can at least be honest and be like, okay, he was right there for the goal. He it was going in. Um, so I'm going to give him a six and a half. Um, there's really no reason to go into it. Beating down on a player that we know should have been gone five, 10, nine, 15,000 years ago. Doesn't really, it doesn't really fill me with any joy. Right. Uh, Trossard, um, I thought had a mixed dish type of game, but did some good things in the first half. Um, you know, uh, you know, Trossard was, was Trossy. Um, we just really didn't create a lot. Um, which is shocking, but whatever. Um, get a pre-assist, you know. Um, I'm gonna give him um a seven. Thought he was good, you know. Um, nothing to write home about. Um, is definitely our third best winger, you know. Um, it's Martinelli and Saka, Trossard. Like you know, so it's it's yeah. There's not a lot there. Um, and Havertz, um you know, got an assist, but really didn't offer that much. Um, he passed, it was short. He passed, it was too long. Like his touch sometimes can be like very frustrating. Um, you know, got a card for diving. They couldn't wait to give, give that to him. Um, I don't think he, did he have any shots? Like maybe, I think maybe like one shot. Um, it was just like a really whatever type of performance from him. And maybe Jesus should start against Brighton, not because I feel like Jesus is going to be like a million times better, but maybe Havertz needs a little break. Uh, so I'm going to give Havertz, um, I'm going to give him like a six and a half. Um, no, yeah, six and a half. Um, the assist was like, just like a fucking layoff. Like other than that, it was just like, whatever, like very blah performance. Um, Rotimi says, um, Kai was a seven. Um, Sam says Trossard was an eight. Samuel says Trossard had an up and down performance, six and a half. Um, Die Hard Gunner says Havertz was a seven today, created a nice goal. William says a solid seven. Blaze says, Jess, what happened to Trossard? Some Arsenal fans already turned on him. He just has up and down games. You know, he's sometimes he's like really, really good. Sometimes he's not, you know, 
Um, I think it's just that. And then once you like, if you ever like once anybody suggested that Trossard should start over Martinelli, which there were times that he should have started over Martinelli because Martinelli was in um, like abysmal form. Once that happened, then people just completely there are certain players in this team that like if you even suggest that they should be dropped, it's like the player that you wanted them to play in front of is like dead, you know? So ever since at the very beginning of the season, like I did, and a couple of other people suggested that Trossard should have started the season because Martinelli was poor in preseason. He didn't look fully fit. And Trossard was playing out of his skin during preseason. It was like they, every time Trossard made a mistake, it was like, see, 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 he shit, he shit, he shit. So it's like, that's just what it is. Like Martinelli is very much so protected and he's a great player, but like, he's really like, we're still waiting on him, you know, to have like a game, you know? Um, Brandon says, am I the only one that thinks Arteta is holding Trussard back? He was way more explosive at Brighton. He needs to be in the box. Like he needs to be in, in and around the box, you know? Um, let's see. The guy says, you said Havertz assist was crap yet. We're glazing Smith Rose one. Did I say it was crap? Did any, can anybody rewind the tape? Did I say um, Havertz assist was crap? I said it was just whatever. Like it was a layoff. Like it wasn't anything like, first of all, let's just, let's just keep it a whole buck right now. Like Havertz is a player that like we spent a lot more money on. We have a lot more expectation of because he is a starter and his overall game, like he's been playing games, like he's shown a high level. He was okay. Like he had some, not so great moments. He had some good moments. He had a layoff for a goal. Fair. Emil is a player that we have lower expectations for because he hasn't played and he's not a starter. So the remit for the two of them is not the same. So nobody was glazing off Emil Smith Rowe's assist. It was his entire performance. It was actually a better and more rounded performance than Kai Havertz. Emil's whole performance from start to finish was better than Kai's. So you have an assist in there. He actually helped create the goal that Havertz did have the assist for, and his overall game was better. Havertz had an okay game. Very okay. Nobody said that his assist was crap. I just said that it was a layoff. It wasn't anything like to write home about, and I stand on that. You know, like, what am, are were we watching the same game? Emil was basically man of the match. Havertz wasn't anywhere near it. So for me, Havertz gets like a six and a half. He was like maybe a seven, you know, maybe at the most, but I would maybe give him a little rest. That's all, you know? Um, and Goni says ESR was terrible. He wasn't. So, and listen, if you guys want to say Emil didn't even have an assist, fair enough. But it's not like, I feel like this is more based on like, what is this based on? Like, why are we being dishonest about Emil Smith Rowe's performance here? Like, why are we being dishonest? Why are we. I feel like what I think it is is that there's people in the chat that didn't like that I said Emil Smith Rowe was the most sparkly of the people that came in for the starters. And so now it's like we're going to be dishonest. He won player of the match. Be serious for five seconds. Like it's not even sympathy or anything like that. It's he genuinely had a good game. And it's just so funny because some of the same people that are trying to downplay Emil Smith Rowe's performance are using Kai Havertz. And if I were to say that, Kai Havertz had a good game. You guys would be trying to convince me he didn't. So let's be honest for five seconds. Emil had a good game. And the expectations for him are quite low. Havertz had an okay game. What are we complaining about? What are we complaining about? What are we complaining about? What, what are we even talking about? I don't really get it. Oh, is it because I didn't say that Partey was man of the match? It always goes back to that, by the way. It always goes back to, you didn't say enough good things about Partey. That's always what it goes back to. You guys are very transparent. Okay, so Havertz, like a six and a half, seven at the max. He was good, not great, nothing special. It was a layoff. It was good, a good layoff, whatever. Um, Emil smith Rowe had a better overall performance. Y'all can't tell me nothing different. We all watched the same game. Um, and the people that came off of the bench... We had uh, Enkedia. We had um, Tommy came off of the bench. Uh, Rice. Don't really need to rate Rice. Um, Martinelli came off of the bench. He didn't really do much. I think the subs more or less kept the level the same. Um, 
And I would say that like Eddie was atrocious for sure. Um, but I have very low expectations for him at this point. He is out the door as far as I'm concerned. So we don't really need to go into like deep discussions about those guys. Cause I think we really just mostly want to talk about Sinchenko parte and Emil and Reese. Um, and then the players that were out there for the majority of the game, but listen, we won the game. We did what we needed to do. Um, you know, hopefully whatever this, you know, performance was, is just mostly due to, you know, maybe a little bit of fatigue and, you know, I don't know why this keeps doing this, maybe a little bit of uh, fatigue and, you know, players just needing a little bit of a rest, you know, maybe a little bit of like, this is not a game that we need to be expending so much energy for. It's a loot inside. That's like super, super injured, you know, but um, I'm just glad that we got the three points. And so we can move on to the next game. Um, trying to organize something for tomorrow um, as a live stream. I know I will be live, but I'm trying to get a guest on if I can. Um, if, oh yeah. Um, yeah, me Deluded is going to be on the show tomorrow. I just got a text message from him. So uh, Deluded tomorrow, uh, we'll go through this game and the upcoming game against Brighton. And then um, we'll have a watch along for Brighton and all that kind of stuff too. So make sure you guys are available for that. And um, yeah, I'll read out some of these comments. Winning Way says Havertz and Jesus are holding the bench next year. D G or D Gunner says English tax on ESR. He should be in a relegation battle at best. This is so funny. Um, let's see. Adrian says, I love the rotations and how most of our players are healthy. Everyone was hungry defensively. Defensively, we're great. You know, everything else is like, uh, we just know where we need to invest. Right. Um, it's so obvious. Um, James Bond says, um, don't ever speak bad on Partey again. Now you learn, Jess. What did I learn? I didn't learn anything. Maybe I missed the class. Maybe I didn't show up. Who's the teacher? I didn't learn anything. All caps too? You guys will never learn. He was good. Nothing special. You guys are really egging it on badly today. But um, I knew as soon as he started playing minutes, you guys would do this. And this is super funny. But um, yeah. I didn't, I, I wasn't at the lesson. I didn't show up to class today. Winning Way says Ross Barkley shouldn't be at Luton. A good player. Um, he was, he played deeper against us. And like, I felt like maybe if he had somebody else, maybe I guess it was Sambi. If he had Sambi in midfield with him, he could have done a little bit more like going forward. But yeah, no. Um, let's see. The guy says, just love to see your face when we see Smith Rowe at Palace next year. This is like a really funny tweet, a uh, really funny uh, message because. Anybody that knows me, like I'm considered an Emil Smith Rowe hater, but the problem is I'm honest when people play well, even if I don't think they'll make it at the club. So yeah, um, I will not be like devastated or egg on my face if Emil goes because my opinion has always been that he's not going to make it at Arsenal. So again, you guys don't listen. You're so you're so busy trying to propel Partey into something that he's not that you're taking on this Emil hate for no reason. I don't think he's going to make it at Arsenal. You're not, you're not saying anything. You're not, y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all not doing nothing. Like, this is so funny. I actually like this. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more comments that I need to read. Um, you what says the days of Arteta cramming in and Keddie are, are done, thankfully. Um, Rui says this was complacency for me. Anton Dunn says Eddie was not atrocious. Martinelli was. If anything, both of them were, but Eddie was not good. He came out there and he fouled at least three times. He he did absolutely nothing of note. His touch was awful. Um, Martinelli was all right. Um, so, yeah, winning way says ESR has to be the first number 10 I see not score in two years and hold bench in football history. Um, yeah, I'm not head of the Emil Smith Rowe fan club, so he's all right. Like, you know, he, I thought he played well today. Doesn't change anything. And that's the thing. It's like one game and one performance often doesn't change the trajectory of a player's career and often doesn't change the overall opinion on a player based on like a large amount of data. So Emil having a good game against Luton doesn't change my mind about him being somebody that's not going to make it at Arsenal. So I haven't changed my mind. I also think Partey needs to be moved on. So nothing that happened in this game or the last game or 
anything has changed my mind on any of that stuff. So, um, but I'm also not going to lie about their performances. If I thought they played well, I'm going to say that I think they played well. And overall, I think both Emil and Thomas Partey played well today, um, despite my overall opinion on them, you know? So JJ Ash said, subscribe and like people and show uh, She Knows Football. Thank you so much. And JJ Ash also says, big up. Our beautiful Jess keeps smashing it. I really appreciate that so, so much. So you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I have more work to do with this tight bun. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow um, for a show with Diluted. Bye, guys.